Thank you. Well, hello everyone. I'm Sarah Holly. I am the director of St. Paul Ramsey County Public Health. I'm really happy to be here with you this afternoon. Thank you for joining us. Um, I just wanna say on behalf of St. Paul Ramsey County Public Health, our Environmental Health Division and Ramsey County Property Management, um, that we really appreciate everyone coming to our first of um, four um, open houses for our Environmental Service Center here in Ramsey County. Um, we are recording um, this virtual gathering as we will make it available here on our Ramsey County website um, after today. Um, your phone lines, you probably noticed, are muted um, for now. Um, and any questions that you have, you know, please make note of those um, for our discussion time together this afternoon, which will happen after our presentation. Um, or you can certainly put your questions um, in the chat box if that's easier. Um, we are looking forward to offering a variety of options at the end of our presentation today for you to provide feedback. So look forward to that um, towards the end of the presentation this afternoon. Um, next slide, please. Um, next, um, today um, you'll have a chance to hear from um, staff from our Environmental Health Division and also um, Ramsey County Property Management. You'll hear from um, Interim Division Manager, Ray Eaton Frank um, from Environmental Health and Jean Kruger, who is our Director of Property Management. Um, I wanna also recognize and acknowledge that we have um, joining us Commissioner McGuire, Mary Jo McGuire, welcome Commissioner. We also have Deputy County Manager, Kathy Hedin, who leads our Health and Wellness Service Team. Um, um, joining us and just recognizing that we may have other commissioners and possibly our county manager and uh, another deputy county manager joining us throughout this time or at future open houses. Uh -huh. Hi, Commissioner Dr McGuire. Director Holly, we do have Commissioner Reinhardt on the phone with us as well. Wonderful. Thank you. <laughs> Commissioner Reinhardt is here. Welcome. It won't let me, oh, I guess it is gonna let me talk now. Yeah. <laughs> I'm really glad to be here. I can't stay for the whole thing, but um, we're very proud of, of what we're doing here, moving things forward up the waste management hierarchy. And it's just exciting for us to, you know, um, to do the right thing for the environment. Thank you. Thanks for joining us. And Thanks for calling Thank that you. out, Commissioner McGuire. I'm looking at one screen. <laughs> I know, I can see five people. So this is, this yeah. is great. Um, <laughs> Um, and welcome community. We really appreciate, first of all, you taking your time um, to be here this afternoon with us. Um, we have some objectives um, this afternoon. Um, our main objective tonight is to really introduce the Enhancing Environmental Health Services Initiative. Um, you, you'll hear from um, Division Manager Frank about the initiative more in a moment. Um, discuss proposed plans for the for an environmental health or environmental service center. And then of course, we wanna hear from you this afternoon. So those are our, our goals um, this afternoon as you're joining us. Um, next slide, please. Before we jump into the presentation this afternoon, we do wanna share some group agreements as we launch into some um, discussion and the latter part of today's presentation with you. And so um, we're just outlining some things here and we do this um, at most of our, our public meetings and gatherings. So we want people to share your thoughts. Please be open-minded to what you're um, learning today. It may be the first time you're learning about this um, or um, just the exploration of where we're headed in this space. Um, listen actively and respectfully when others are speaking. You know, really speak from your own experience instead of generalizing. Um, if you have a question, please ask it respectfully and frame, you know, refrain from any personal attacks or, you know, this is, this could also be um, just lifting up some things in community that we're going to have a discussion about this afternoon. Um, step up and step back. Um, don't try not to dominate the discussion and allow others to be heard. Um, turn on your camera if you're able, especially when speaking. We'll get to that part where we won't have this presentation in front of you and we want to see your faces and hear from you. Um, when you have a chance, um, you know, mute your microphone when you're not speaking this afternoon. And then of course, throughout the, the presentation, feel free to add those questions and comments in the chat if that's more comfortable. We do have our environmental health team here uh, monitoring the chat um, throughout the time that we're together. So um, next slide, please. Um, the county has adopted a land acknowledgement that we that we recognize and read at all of our um, public meetings, um, and so I want to take a moment to do that. Um, every county, every community owes its existence and vitality to generations from around the world who contributed their hopes, 
dreams, and energy to making the history that led to this moment. Some were brought here against their will. Some were drawn to leave their distant homes in hope of a better life. And some have lived on this land since time immemorial. Truth and acknowledgement are critical to building mutual respect and connection across all barriers of heritage and difference. We are standing on the ancestral lands of the Dakota people. We want to acknowledge the Ojibwe, the Ho-Chunk, and the other nations of people who also call this place home. We pay respects to their elders past and present. Please take a moment to consider the treaties made by tribal nations that entitle non-native people to live and work on traditional native lands. Consider the many legacies of violence, displacement, migration, and settlement that bring us together here today. And please join us in uncovering such truths at any and all public events. Thank you. All right, next slide, please. So before we, we launch into what is an environmental service center, I wanna lift up our county goals uh, around well-being, prosperity, and opportunity and accountability. Um, our goals as a county are, of course, to strengthen individual, family, and community well-being through innovative programming, prevention, and environmental stewardship. Um, our county strategic priority that um, is in alignment with this particular um, effort is around residents first, so making sure that we're effective and efficient and accessible and making sure our operations are doing that. And so our county goals, our county strategic priority, our vision and mission ground us here in Ramsey County and are really the guardrails by which we do our work. Um, and so um, we just wanted to share that this evening and um, the county you know, really has a priority um, around residents first. And this is another key component of the project that you'll hear more about um, this evening. Next slide, please. Now I'd like to turn it over um, to Ray. Thank you. Thank you, Director Holly, and thank you all for being here. It's really exciting to see so many people who are committed and concerned and have um, investment in the environment here in Ramsey County. So you may be wondering, what is an environmental service center? Um, it's basically what it says. It's a facility or a center where the collection and transfer of household hazardous waste can happen. It can also include food scrap collection, yard waste, electronics, and other recyclables. Um, just to give a little grounding on what we mean when we're talking about household hazardous waste, we're referring to waste that's generated from household activities. So that can be cleaning supplies, it can be paint, used oil if you change your own uh, car oil, that type of thing, or pesticides or herbicides, some of the common um, products that are used for gardening around the home. So an environmental service center is a collection site for all of those materials, and it also could include space for a reuse room. We'll talk a little bit more about that, community education, and fix-it clinics. Next slide, please. So some of you might be familiar with our current uh, facility and our current household hazardous waste collection site, which is owned and operated by Bay West. It's uh, in St. Paul. It's on Enter, uh, Empire Drive. Uh, Basically, our current household hazardous waste management system was designed to focus primarily on environmental protection. And our current facility, these are pictures you can see, um, doing a really great job, doing a really good job, um, and provide many of the services that I discussed and, and highlighted on the previous slide. However, the, the, the space is tight, um, especially during peak service periods. There is no um, room for growth, so there's no loading docks. It's not large enough to have a to community room. We do have a reuse room there, but it's quite small. Don't have any room for expansion, so no room for a community education room. We aren't. Um, we don't accept electronic waste there, and don't have room again to expand. Um, and especially electronic waste, that was one of the priorities we heard from community was a resource for the collection of electronic waste. So really, um, it's lacking some of the key features necessary for program goal um, for the growth of the program. So next slide, please. So this leads us to our current initiative, um, which we are calling Enhancing Environmental Health Services. We um, embarked on a, a number of community feedback sessions um, in 2020 and 2021. And, and really what we heard is that uh, a new system is in order and we're looking to develop that new system so that we can improve accessibility, so that we can improve and increase participation 
um, and the things that we do around recycling and waste disposal and those services that we offer to the residents within the county. So this system that we're looking to redesign towards align with those county goals that Director Holly was talking about and um, specifically around well-being and is really consistent with that residents first approach. So some of the recommendations we heard from residents was to um, expand the focus of our current programming to include environmental protection and expand that to include racial equity, health equity, environmental justice, and also economic benefits. All of this while increasing opportunity for residents to reduce, repair, recycle, and repair, or I don't know if I said uh, four hours, reduce, reuse, repair, and recycle. And I think there's a couple of other R's in there, but uh, next slide, please. So this is just to give you a little bit of visual um, representation about what we heard from community. Um, it's really our priority of the county to drive improvements in services and facilities with an emphasis on engaging residents and also employees and businesses. So some of the feedback on the left hand side you can hear we heard during our community engagement sessions that um, the current service can be frustrating, inconsistent, unwelcoming. There's inadequate uh, and, and inequitable access to services for some residents. Household hazardous waste continues to be improperly disposed of in the trash and poured down the drain. So that left side is sort of some of that input that we heard and images of um, what we heard from the community. And the right side is where we're heading, where we'd like to go and some of the solutions that residents provided. The, um, what we heard was uh, more comprehensive services are being asked for, including the collection of electronic waste, extended hours, a location that's accessible, convenient, welcoming, less confusing. Services that address gaps for Ramsey County's racially diverse communities, our elderly residents, and also individuals without transportation. And we also heard a recommendation to provide a house side collection service. Next slide, please. So this leads us to our proposed environmental service center. At the center, like I spoke about um, earlier in our current services that we're providing at Bay West, we'll continue to offer services for collection and transfer of household hazardous waste for recycling and also some select reuse. Um, but this facility will also include program space for community education, for our fix-it clinics, space for residents to receive products for reuse. Um, and some of these key, uh, this, this uh, county-owned and designed uh, center some of those key components will better address equity and environmental justice. Um, our intent is to serve more residents, increasing accessibility, accepting more items such as electronic waste, be more cost efficient, uh, have space for education and training rooms like I spoke about, the fix-it clinics, the recycling ambassadors, um, and also some outdoor educational spaces. We'd also like to be able to have comprehensive services where we could host compost bins and rain barrel sales expanded a more inviting reuse room from what we currently have at Bay West and support the expansion of services to include some um, opportunities like a house side collection program. Next slide, please. And I will turn it over to Property Management Director Jean Kruger at this point. Thank you for that, Ray. So as you've heard the desired services, enhanced services, et cetera, that are desired to be able to be provided at this new facility, the project team with the assistance of a real estate consultant developed the site criteria that we felt would be necessary to best provide a facility of this nature. We'll state the obvious, but certainly first and foremost, a site, a location needed to be within Ramsey County. And based on resident in, input previously, the desire for the drive times for residents to be less than or equal to 15 minutes for the most of the residents. So really a very centrally located facility. Based on the programming initiative services to be housed in this facility, it was determined that we needed to uh, find a location that would provide about five acres of land we knew that we needed to be able to serve a, a number of vehicles at the same time, and the number there was determined to be five, and also the ability to queue at least 20 cars, again, without conflicting with other neighborhood uses and access. 
to the facility and the surrounding area. Best to be close to a major road, prox proximate to a freeway or a state highway be even better. There would need to be access obviously to the residents, but also to the trucks, the, the companies, the firms that we work with. Suitability for a paved surface with little or no slope. We want the property to be uh, easily to uh, build on, easy to build on. We don't want to have any negative impact on the surrounding land use. And we want to be able to be in a location which is recognizable and accessible by the public. And that might include people in the neighborhood being able to uh, walk to a facility or perhaps even get there by bike or transit. We reviewed and evaluated county owned properties as well as a number of available properties elsewhere within the county. Next slide, please. After evaluating those options for sites, both county owned and otherwise, we believe we found a location that meets our needs. After carefully considering the site criteria that I went through, including the location, the accessibility, the property size, the suitability for construction of a building such as we will need, as well as factoring in the estimated costs and the environmental impact, we're proposing the use of a county owned site that's located at 1700 Kent Street in Roseville. The site, as you'll see in a moment, is very centrally located within the county. It will allow us to meet our program and equity uh, needs and goals. The site in total that is uh, bordered here in the dashed line is 18 acres that provides ample space for the facility, diagrammatically shown here in red, as well as providing other area on the property that is currently used by pub our county public works and would continue to be used uh, by the county public works. So the site again is well situated to meet the criteria that we have, uh, we had, uh, determined uh, at the start of the search and uh, again, centrally located. Next slide, please. <clears throat> As stated previously, one criteria was to be within that 15 minute or less drive time. What you'll see here on the map on the left is of course, Ramsey County and the red dot denotes the location at 1700 Kent Street. The drive times shown in the dark green area are 10 minutes. The drive times from the areas shown in the light green are 15 minutes. And as you can see, the, mo the majority of Ramsey County and residents within Ramsey County would have that 15 minute or less drive time to the facility. For comparison purposes, the map on the right side shows the locations of similar facilities in our neighboring counties. And as you can see there as well, the facilities that they have are similarly centrally located uh, as far as achieving that 15 minute or less drive time, making it very convenient and accessible for all residents within the county. Again, this was something heard from the community and a, a major factor in our citing criteria. With that, I will turn it back to Sarah. Thank you, Jeannie. All right, next slide, please. So next we wanna provide a few examples um, of, of what could be possible um, in this proposed space. The photos that you're seeing in front of you are examples of environmental um, centers, both here in Minnesota um, and elsewhere. And so these photos represent counties and communities um, that have existing facilities. Um, or counties and communities that are in the process of designing a facility. And so you'll see the existing facility to your upper, in the upper left-hand corner of your screen is the facility um, in Washington County, it's their environmental center. Um, and then to your immediate right at, in the top right corner 
is a conceptual rendering of the facility that's being built in Pope D Douglas, Minnesota. Um, the lower two photos to the left is an existing facility in Dakota County. Um, the recycling zone is what they call it. Um, and then to, in the lower right hand corner, there's an existing facility in Elk Grove, California, just giving you an example of another solid waste collection center. So you'll see some really good examples here of what could be possible um, in this space. Next slide, please. Next, um, just giving you all an example, um, a, a visual of what um, a drive up space could look like. As, as Ray mentioned earlier at our current site, we do have a drive up space that can only accommodate so many um, vehicles. And so again, this is just an example. Um, the actual facility um, will differ, um, will be designed for, we're really looking at acceptability, uh, accessibility and ease um, with um, our the proposed facility. And then really having that ease of use um, while really offering a drive up space um, that offers that protection from weather and can um, allow a number of vehicles to have that drive up space. And I just want to reiterate that this is an example of what the drive up space could look like. Next slide, please. Um, here are some examples of um, what the educational space could look like. Um, as Ray mentioned earlier, um, our educational, the need for an educational space is really important. Um, you know, we could host fix it clinics in this space and have other community meetings related to environmental health and public health in this space. Um, we would really like um, to have a welcoming and functional space um, for, for the community. Um, and we will be welcoming um, community feedback um, when we enter into the phase um, of the, the next phase of the planning process. And so again, these are just examples of what some of um, the community spaces, um, educate what the educational spaces could look like um, into the future. Next slide, please. Lastly, we wanted to share just some examples of outdoor community spaces, um, really making sure that um, again, we get community input um, as we go further along in this process, but you know our outdoor space could be utilized for outdoor learning, community gardens, um, but just really having that um, that natural space and outdoor space for for people to gather and for people to utilize here in Ramsey County. All right, next slide, please. Um, so you may be wondering. How will this get paid for, right? And so we wanted to give you all insight into the funding sources here. And so um, the county environmental charge, which we know as CEC, um, is a is a fee um, that residents have uh, as far as trash collection services here in the county. So the funds generated from this must be spent on solid waste activities and strategies within Ramsey County. And so um, here we're listing what the projected cost range would be for this project. And we're looking around 25 to $29 million for this project. Um, and I just wanna preface that there will be no increase to the existing county environmental charge as a result of um, constructing this new facility here in Ramsey County. All right, I wanna turn it back over to Director Kruger to provide some insight into our timeline. Thank you for that, Director Holly. So as you are aware, here in October, uh, we are in this communication and community engagement period uh, with this and three subsequent um, opportunities scheduled. We will be moving with the design team uh, a selection in the next weeks or month, and then literally kicking off the full design phase of the project. We do expect that design phase to take into uh, fall of 2023. And at that point in time, we would move forward, uh, assuming that all things are a go from an approved design and begin the construction. We estimate about a two year construction time frame, which would allow us environmental health to open that facility in the uh, at the near the end of 2025. Obviously, there's a lot of work to be completed here, but to just give an idea of the time frame, that's what we would be estimating is a facility opening at the end of 2025. And I'll turn it back. 
Great, thank you. So some next steps. Um, one thing that I want to uh, make a point to let folks know is that um, with that anticipated opening of a new facility in 2025, the current services that we offer at Bay West will continue. So those that that permanent collection site that we have at Bay West, along with our system of um, mobile collection sites throughout the year, all of those services will continue and are, we're anticipating to not have any, um, any gaps in, in providing services for residents in regards to the collection of household hazardous waste. So um, some of our next steps uh, are that we're gonna be evaluating. We released an RFP, a request proposal uh, for a design build construction firm. We are in the process of evaluating those proposals and those submissions currently. Um, county staff are involved in that process as well as we have two community members who are involved and will be in the process of the interviews which will be happening later this month. Um, and then we're, we're aiming for a, a, a late, late fall um, start date for that contract. Um, we have a community engagement survey, which we'll be doing in early 2023, along with some additional community engagement opportunities. We realize that our community, community engagement opportunities that we have for the month of October, two, while two of them are virtual, the two that are in person are in Roseville. And the intent for that was um, to be able to hear from community from the entire county, but also recognizing that there may be some additional um, community that want us to be able to, to participate from the Roseville area, since that's where this location, the proposed site is, is located. Um, but we anticipate having further community engagement um, participation opportunities throughout 2023. Um, and then coming back to where we are today, we're October 6th, we're the first of our, our four. Uh, community engagement sessions will our next uh, session will be next Wednesday that'll be uh, an open house similar format we will be presenting the same information. But if you're interested in coming in person meeting us in person having a little bit more of a interactive experience, um, just because it's in person, you are certainly welcome to join us next Wednesday, October 12th from 5 to 7pm and that'll be at the Ramsey County Library in Roseville. Next slide, please. I think I'm turning it back over to Director Holly. All right, thank you. Well, now we wanna segue into hearing from you. And so um, um, if you're not familiar with <laughs> Mentimeter, we are going to attempt to have people, um, we really wanna gather your thoughts and feedback um, on uh, what's been presented here this evening. So take a moment, grab your smartphone, maybe you're on your smartphone, that's okay also. Um, but there is a login. Katie, do you want to go back to that login? Um, it's www.menti.com. And that code actually is right at the top of the screen. It's 13622273. And so um, you can use your phone for this, but in the case that um, you don't have access to that or you just don't want to maybe, um, please feel free to use um, the chat box or um, simply raise your hand to be unmuted. Um, the first question um, that we have this afternoon, and I wanna give people a chance, that's fine, Katie, you can go back there um, um, to open um, the, the link. Again, that's www.menti.com. And the code there is 13622273. Um, our first question, and, and what will happen here is if you type in um, a comment to these questions, it's going to self-populate here on the screen. So um, our first question as people um, get to the, um, the Mentee um, app or um, link is what is most exciting about the plans for the new um, Environmental Service Center? So what's most exciting to you about this? Thank you. We have our first comment. It's working, that's wonderful. All right, so people are saying that, it, you know, for the folks on the phone that it provides more opportunities and reduces more materials from going into landfills and um, incinerators, amazing community resource, especially excited about product reuse room. I agree, um, opportunities for resident education, um, wonderful feedback. Um, we'll give folks a moment to Katie to fill in, yeah. People may just be getting that link open. Community and education space, right? E-waste collection, yes. 
Electronics drop off eliminates the effort needed to identify where to bring items which are not suitable for the trash. Mm -hmm. See, we have some environmental health advocates here in, in the Zoom room tonight. Centrally located. Mm -hmm. This is great. And if you're not on Menti, feel free to fill in the chat box here on Zoom. Um, we'll also have an opportunity. I think Jordan, people are able to come off mute also. Um, we can do some raised hands. We'll keep the screen up, but I'll try to monitor here for people. All right. All right. And we'll also have, we'll, we'll take the, the screen down too in a moment once we kind of get through some of these questions and just open it up for general comments and questions too. Um, so let's go to the next question. Thanks, Ray. All right, so what concerns you about the environmental, the proposed environmental um, service center? Give people a moment to respond. What concern, what's most concerning? Mm -hmm. Will it be accessible by bus and bike? Mm -hmm. What is most concerning? Okay, the next comment, um, a question, will it allow for many types of materials, not the standard ones going to Bay West location now to be potentially reused and repurposed? Question. Yeah, will more people actually use the facility? We'll take some time to respond to these questions too as they come in um, in a moment. What's most concerning about the new Environmental Service Center? Next slide, thank you, Katie. What other things does Ramsey County need to consider when building the Environmental Service Center? So what else do we need to consider? And it's not too late to join the Menti. <laughs> website. That code is right at the top of the screen. Um, so feel free to add your comments there. And certainly we will open it up in a moment um, to comments and questions. Mm -hmm. Making sure the community knows about it and feels comfortable using it. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, is there or can there be reciprocity to other counties, centers, and similar um, slash similar services? Question. We are capturing your your comments and questions, particularly through Menti, but also um, so we can get to some of them in a moment. Other things that you want us to consider. Yep, allow a place for reuse staging beyond typical reuse room sites. Mm -hmm. See WLSSD program for examples. Could you spell West, out Western that? Lake Superior Sanitary District? Thank Sorry. you, Howard. <laughs> I was just going to say, can, can you spell out that acronym? Thank you. <laughs> You're a friend of public health with acronyms. All right, education so that people will know whether to bring their organics or yard waste to the site or the current site. Mm -hmm. So it sounds like a theme here is really awareness. 
uh, making sure people know comfortable um, reciprocity between counties um, and then that reuse piece. Will it be as easy as Washington County where you don't even get out of your car? It's a good, really good question, especially with that, that drive-through aspect, um, having that option. How to involve local businesses in the development. Thank you for that comment. And somebody seconded your comment, Howard, um, or similar to Becker, I can't see that, um, to Becker County's building material, household goods reuse. Okay. A lot of good things to consider, um, things for us to think about related to concerns and also, um, you know, what about this is exciting. So let's go ahead and um, let's um, stop sharing the screen. And I just want to first just say thank you. Um, for your time, and um, this is our our time to come together. You can you can raise your hand, you can come off mute, um, but we want to hear from you. Any you know existing other things that are exciting, any concerns, things that we want to consider, um, and any questions that you do have, I will ask the team um, while we're um, in conversation this evening to put the website to where you can find more information about this initiative. Um, and you can use um, you can use the comment form and view the FAQ on our website. This recording will be available there, and um, I'm thinking this, um, the presentation also at some point. Um, you can also send a question to the ask eh at ramseycounty.us with specific questions. So I will pause there and open it up for questions. It looks like Commissioner McGuire has her hand up. Go ahead. Thanks, Director Holly, and thanks, Director Kruger and Frank. I really appreciate this presentation. We're we're excited um, about this possibilities of this center, and I really um, am glad we're bringing it out to the residents in in many different ways and offering them a lot of opportunities to comment. I was telling some call some constituents, some people I was taking a walk with. Um, the other day and and i said you know we're having this environmental service center and they said is there going to be a place to put our sod so you probably all know this i the sod we can't bring it to yard waste because if it has these worms so there's this worm infestation so that our yard waste doesn't take sod so they have been searching all over on where to take sod so i just wanted to say i told them i would bring it up and so we just want to add it to the list of where you bring sod so um, it's just one of those things that I don't know if we, I guess we don't take it. We don't take it at our yard waste site. Uh, I didn't know that, but they told me they didn't. So um, I'm just uh, adding it to the list of um, maybe hard to recycle, hard to manage um, items that we do. And will we, will we be taking mattresses and things at this site or will there still be the day, the day, the days of, you know, those day long events where cities have them and people can bring all of their stuff. So those were some of the questions the community was asking me. Thank you, Commissioner McGuire. Um, Ray, do you wanna answer any of those questions? And we'll also get to the questions that came in through Menti also, we've, do we've documented those. Um, Ray, your team? Yeah, thank you. Thank you for the questions, Commissioner McGuire. And I, I wasn't taking notes, so I'm not sure that I got all of them, but. Um, certainly, we will be um, expanding the services that we, so the current services that we have at Bay West will be offered at this new, this new center, along with additional services such as organic waste collection, and we will continue to have organic waste collection at our yard waste site. So we're not going to change any of the services at our yard waste sites. We'll be expanding to include electronic waste. Um, so that's been a really big issue for residents, not having anywhere free to bring TVs and all the different kinds of electronics we have nowadays. Um, as far as sod collection, I'm or, or, or uh, I'm gonna have to turn to John Springman, who is our um, uh, solid waste operations supervisor, to address the sod issue. And as far as mattresses. Um, we that's a bigger project we are looking at how to expand mattress collection and mattress recycling and so we um, are certainly looking at that as a possible services but we haven't that isn't anything that we have <clears throat> concrete plans for at the moment and john can you address the sod sure uh commissioner uh, good question uh, the uh, pest you're referring to is, is jumping worms that it's an invasive that was more recently uh, introduced to minnesota 
creates a big problem in people's backyards with kind of almost tilling up their soil if you end up with an infestation and can be spread by their eggs or or by the worms themselves. So we've been put under uh, restrictions by Minnesota Department of Agriculture and the University of Minnesota Extension Service um, at our yardway sites to, to no longer accept the material to uh, decrease the risk of spreading it from our yardway sites to other people's yards. Uh, we do have current listings of uh, locations on um, where people can take that, typically a transfer station or uh, possibly another um, ex excavating company that um, is using the soil more for fill than for gardening purposes. So we can certainly evaluate, you know, taking this as one of the um, those odd items that you say is, is very hard to get rid of. Hopefully, um, maybe by the time this is even built, uh, we would have some other sort of uh, measures or methods <laughs> to manage that pest. Uh, currently, there is none other than, um, you know, I guess, uh, just remediation of the issue from the start and not having it uh, spread around from direct movement of materials. Thanks, John. I just did not had not heard of those jumping worms before. And so it was a new thing for me. And thanks for helping with that. And I'll, I'll let them know they're going to have to find a spot to, to bring them. Um, and you have to pay to get your sod removed. Of course, they they I think found a spot. But OK, thank you. You're welcome. All right. Thank you, Commissioner McGuire. It looks like Melissa was next. Her hand up, Melissa. <clears throat> yes, thank you so much. Um, double checking that I have the ability for you to hear me and see me. Yes, we can hear you. <laughs> you are off mute. <laughs> We've had a few problems on our end at the state. Uh, Melissa Wenzel, for the point, the purpose of this meeting, I am representing me at my day job, Minnesota Pollution Control Agency. I'm the Built Environment Sustainability Administrator. And I've been working with a couple different counties or at least aware of some counties when they are creating these environmental centers. Um, some of them are still really new to me like uh, Dodge County and Pope Douglas, but a lot of them have been inspired or have received grant money or both to include household goods and building materials. Thus, you might be able to see the theme of my comments if you uh, tie the two together. Um, I do want the county to consider offering an opportunity for reuse for household goods beyond what is classically a household hazardous materials. And I'm going to use the word materials instead of waste because they still have purpose. But um, there's a lot of uh, impact throwing away those building materials and household goods. There's a lot of carbon, there's a lot of money, there's a lot of money to replace those items with newly built or newly created items. There's a very large growing movement in wanting to recognize that these materials can have a second life. And I know that there may be some overlap with, or some people might think that there's overlap with uh, thrift stores and reuse stores and stuff like that. However, a lot of the counties actually will partner with them or local upcycle organizations and companies will also benefit from them. Um, NPCA actually has a grant opportunity right now. This won't be necessarily good timing for Ramsey County, but I'm sure there'll be more funding opportunities later to support this sort of initiative. So we call it the Becker County model, where at their construction and demolition landfill that is county owned, they actually built a room where not only do they charge a tipping fee for the materials, they also will uh, have prices on items that they're able to recover and sell back to the public. Uh, they eventually would like to go away from the tipping fee, but that's currently required. However, you know, kind of brilliant to be paid twice for the same materials, perhaps even a third time if you think about what's avoided going to landfills, saving that space for another time. Anyways, we're seeing a growing movement across the nation and especially here in Minnesota with those other counties. I would love to have something within Ramsey County, which is also the county I happen to live in. So I have a personal and professional interest in seeing this opportunity, but regardless, I'm happy to see this going forward like this. Thank you for your Thank comment you. and for the uh, advice around funding potentially in the future. We appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioner Reinhardt. Thank you. Um, I, as I stated at the beginning, I do have to leave here for uh, another meeting that I have to get to. But I do want to say that, you know, the people that have talked to me about this are just very excited about the, the possibilities here and knowing that there's going to be uh, the community engagement um, that is, is really gonna make it so that it is user-friendly. 
and um, and you could tell by the way the centers are being designed that they're meant to be very welcoming. They're clean. They're welcoming. They're um, you know you can come in and it, depending on what you have to do, whether it's driving through with your car or it's some other way. One of the things that I'd like uh, to be considered here, and I don't know um, if it's already being considered, but there are other aspects of building a building that will help us with uh, equitable climate resiliency as well. Um, I'm wondering if, and here I am, I'm a commissioner, I'm supposed to be giving answers, right? But I'm asking questions. Are we gonna look at the possibility of having solar energy um, or some other, I'm sure we will as far as uh, sustainable practices with within the building and within the parking services, uh, surfaces and all of that. So I know that that's part of what we do automatically, but I'm wondering about um, the energy sources and, and how things are moving, um, you know, to all electric vehicles and, and different things. So really think outside the box as far as could we um, do something else that would make it a learning opportunity for people to see how um, reusable energy or how we can build into this environmental center um, the actual construction and uh, ongoing use of the facility. I would like to see that. I just am with the, uh, and I don't know if it works for uh, counties or not, but with the 30% um, tax reduction or paying it from, the, from, from your taxes, uh, there's a lot of people, including myself, that are, are going to put solar on their homes because it's the time to do it. So maybe we could get something some funding for that as well for a facility like this. So sure. Just an idea. <laughs> Thank you. Noted. And I do have to sign off. Um, I'm excited to hear the results of all of these. I'm going to try to uh, be in some of the others as well. Um, but I think this really is an exciting time for Ramsey County and for, for our environment and being good stewards of our environment. So thank you. Well, thank you all for coming and, and uh, participating in this in this process. Thank you, Commissioner Reinhardt. It's always thank good you. to have you. Ray? I was just going to say thank you. And at, at some point, we can talk more with the commissioners about um, some of the energy um, and sustainability components that we have built, both into the uh, request for proposals for the design build firm. That was an important question that we asked of companies to propose to us what their standards were. Also, we will be utilizing the SB 2030 energy standards and um, uh, property management, uh, property manager director, excuse me, uh, Jean Kruger can speak a little bit more at sort of those specifics about some of those um, energy standards and sustainability criteria that will be incorporated into the building. Yeah, thanks, Ray. And, and obviously we are, you know, have not taken the dive into the design yet, <laughs> but certainly as you've heard the sustainability component of this, the building materials, the design, um, Will there be solar or not? I can't tell you yet, but what I can tell you is we are gonna be exploring all of the sustainability goals and um, best practices out there uh, to see which ones will or won't work at this site. And I think, I uh, appreciate your idea that whatever we do do in the, that arena, that we incorporate that into some of the educational components, um, you know, uh, about the building into yeah. the building. So definitely is, is part and parcel of the design phase. Thank you so much. Have a good rest of your meeting. Thank you. All right, I wanna um, tag Filson in. <laughs> Just one of our staff from Environmental Health to get to the questions that we had on, on mentees. So Filson, I'm gonna turn it over to you. Thank you, Sarah. Can everybody yeah. hear me? Yes. Perfect. Nice to see some folks that I haven't seen in a while. Howard was one of our fixer, our fixer clinics. Nice seeing you. Um, thank you so much for everybody for making time to be here. Um, I have a few, I think I have five questions total that I'll just be asking. The first one is, um, will this site be accessible by bus slash bikes? Mm. And I think who, Ray or John, whoever would like to take that. So certainly by bike. Um, it's very bikeable. I've actually biked over there myself. I live in Hamlin Midway in the St. Paul area. So it's, it's bikeable within St. Paul. Um, 
So I um, am actually embarrassed to say that I didn't, there have been conversations about the um, transit line on Larpender. Um, and so I will need to turn that over to somebody who's more familiar if there's anybody. I was gonna look that up before that, I was gonna look up the transit line um, before this meeting tonight and I failed to do so. So I'm gonna turn that over to see if someone else has um, more information about the locations of the nearest bus lines where we can get back to folks if that's something mm -hmm. that we need to. I think we can, unless Jean. Um, Sounds good. Um, the second question is, uh, will there, oh, go for it. No, I was just gonna add, that's one thing that, you know, regardless of where the bus line is, right? Um, certainly the site itself would not be so there would need to be, you know, some some amount of walking. So the fact that it's accessible to pedestrians as well as in vehicles is is a definite yes. It then becomes a question of how far someone would want to walk from a from a, a bus stop. Yeah. Thank you, Jean. Okay. Sounds good. Um, I just added the questions in the chat just just so you can get a heads up as they're coming. Um, but the second question is, uh, will more people actually use this facility? I guess that's a, we hope so. Uh, yes. We hope that it brings more folks in because of the increased services and the increased accessibility. Mm -hmm. um, and we hope to do adequate um, engagement and uh, marketing and um, advertising and outreach to sustain and increase the um, access and, and, and also the, the use of the, of the facility. But I guess in some ways that, that remains to be seen. Mm -hmm. And I think I just wanna build on what Ray mentioned earlier around just enhancing the goal here is to enhance environmental health services. And so, um, you know, if we are accepting more items, right, we open that that electronic waste option up. Well, I, my hope is that, again, we we see more people um, and and just having, as Jean mentioned earlier, being more centrally located, you know, having that 10 minute or 15 minute drive from any part of Ramsey County or in the surrounding areas, I think hopefully opens up that opportunity. I want to lift up the, the importance of education and awareness of, of the site. And I think the opportunity to have to make sure that we're accountable to that and doing that in this process and making sure that our engagement process is an iterative process. Um, tonight, we have just given you a glimpse into what we're proposing. So we wanna do take a deeper dive as we move forward with this, this project. Um, the other part of this is as we potentially have more community open space, we have more opportunities to have folks like Howard and other folks um, participate in our fix-it clinics, right? To have those opportunities to engage community more and more. Our hope is that people will, will come to this, this site and engage um, and see it as another um, accessible um, service here in Ramsey County. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, and Noelle added in the chat that there's a Metro um, bus line number 65 that's going to be closest to the site so thank you for that as well um second last question will this will um the site be uh, used for re reciprocal uses um along with other counties yes so we will similar to how we have a reciprocal use agreement now um with metro counties we would continue to have that um reciprocal use agreement for this facility similar to like we do it at Bay West currently. That's great. Thank you, Ray. And um, back on the transit line, somebody, uh, Kate mentioned that the closest stop is the Dale and Larpenter. So thank you for that. Um, last question. Um, someone said, would this be as easy as Washington County's um, center. I like how we have a comparison. Thank you for adding that. <laughs> we at that. We hope so. One of the we uh, toured several of the facilities that are currently the environmental centers that are currently in existence in the metro area, Hennepin County being one. Um, the environmental, the Washington County Environmental Center in Woodbury was another one. 
Um, and if that's the one that folks are referring to, um, we certainly hope so. And some of our components that we have in ideas and have suggested um, or thought, thought would be um, appropriate for our site would be to similar to Washington County to have that covered. Um, so folks who are familiar with that site when you drive in, yes, you stay in your vehicle and it's covered, um, which helps with some of that protection, obviously in Minnesota from, from the winters and the snow and um, at least keeps out some of the cold, so. Awesome, those are all the questions I had. Um, I'll hand it back to you, Sarah. Thank you. Um, Filson, we didn't have any other questions in the excitement or concerns? No nope. aspects, okay. All right. Well, everyone, um, are there any other existing comments or questions or um, for us this evening? Feel free. I mean, you can come off mute. I think folks are able to do that now and um, or put any comments or questions in the chat. I, I have a couple comments, if that's yeah, OK. That's definitely OK. Yep. Uh, the first is uh, I think the the center is a great step in the right direction. Mm -hmm. I think it will be used more than the existing channels today. If you haven't tried to get rid of a microwave or something like that uh, recently, it's quite an experience. You have to call during the day to find out if they take the item and if they're open and how much it charges, how much they charge. Their websites don't include any of that information. Once you do it, one, one in 10 households in Ramsey County do not have a car. And so now I have to take my microwave on mass transit to where? So until the other part of that is fleshed out, and as I understand from John, there's a, there's a, there's a pickup option that's kind of being kicked around and is happening simultaneous to this. This is probably even an enabler for that <laughs> because you've got a place they can bring it instead of bringing it to who knows where. Uh, so, but until that option kind of comes up as well, we're not gonna approach equity. Uh, you know, there's still this big, you know, I'm going to take my bag of waste and drive it someplace. Well, eh, until we make it as easy as it is to get rid of garbage, we're, we're not done. <laughs> and so that that's the first thing. And then the, the second thing would be, as we look at reuse or uh, trying to prevent things from going into uh, the, re, the reuse cycle, picking things up at front, there's an opportunity to not only divert usable items, but to find items, one in approximately one in six items that we see in fix-it clinics are not broken. The person brought them to us, they were ready to get rid of them, but the item was not broken. They was just, they were having some trouble using it. A lot of those things find their way into the garbage. If we can redirect those things, back out into the population there's a significant social impact we can make on people who need that stuff and it can be in conjunction with the thrift stores i'll add one last thing thrift stores don't fix stuff that if you provided a place some place where items could be staged and people could look at them and uh fix them it would be huge so I, I just I offer those things as is my opinions from somebody who spends a bunch of time uh, digging through the garbage and fixing stuff for people and all that. And, and with that, I'll, uh, I'll I'll shut up and let somebody else talk. Thank you very much. Thank you, Howard. Excellent comments. We appreciate that. I will add that one of the services that we are very much um, looking at adding is that house side collection service. Um, Commissioner Mattis Castillo went on a tour, I believe it was before COVID, to uh, Montreal and learned about the toxic taxi and brought that idea back to us in Ramsey County. Very excited about it, the toxic taxi. So that's an easy ring. It sticks in my mind. Um, and then COVID happened. So we all know what happened. And now we're finally sort of digging ourselves out of, out of the, um, you know, from being in that COVID response. And and being able to um, start focusing on this project again. But I just wanna to put that out there that that is a service that we are very um, interested in implementing. It'll, it'll take some work, but it's definitely, um, your point was very well taken around the equity piece that that is something that really needs to be addressed. I appreciate that. A lot of good things coming up um, this evening, accessibility, equity, right? 
looking at how we um, reuse and recycle um, the things that we have in our households, right, Howard? <laughs> things that we may not know how to use, but that we could potentially fix or share with other people in our community. Um, and and to I think Commissioner Reinhardt's um, point earlier, you know, looking at energy, um, and then I think you know Commissioner McGuire, you brought up the point around just awareness and you know knowing where to where to take soil, right? And so Tara, thank you for putting that link in the chat. Um, other comments or questions? Let's check the chat. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, and again, thank you, Howard. I had no idea that folks are bringing non-broken things to the fix-it clinics. Mm -hmm. That's right. fascinating. Yeah. If you think about it, your food processor, if you don't have it aligned just right, it won't go on. That's so you don't cut your fingers off. That's a good thing. Well, if you're not aware of those little safety interlocks, it doesn't work. Mm -hmm. Same thing with some of your yard tools. That, that vacuum that picks up the leaves, the blower vacuum thing, if you don't have that vacuum tube on there just right, it won't come on. And we see those pretty regularly. I, I might be exaggerating with one in six, but boy, it's not a lot uh, less than that, uh, that we see people bringing it in because it's not working for them. So it's not always about broken. It's just, it's education. It's sometimes there's little tweaks as well. I mean, one out of, we fix three out of four things that come in. I'm including the ones that weren't broken, but uh, but so think about that. Three out of four things that people are ready to toss, they bring to us and we're able to fix without leaving the room in a three hour session. That's like, that's a magic. Think about what you could do with all that stuff. There's lots of, I, I, during the uh, hiatus here, I've been replacing or repairing things for people in my Facebook group, my Facebook buy nothing group. And I've repaired hundreds of items. And these are all things that they were, you know, I'm giving away the, um, I'm giving away the bowl and the beaters to my mixer because it died. Well, no, your $400 KitchenAid mixer did not die. You, somebody fiddled with the brushes and I took the brushes out and put them back in. Now it works again. So, I mean, wow. Wow. <laughs> How cool to keep, not only keep it out of the landfill, but where people have moved on and already replaced it to pass that on to someone who doesn't have one or needs one. Ah, it's really cool. I can't keep up with it. I had to stop doing it. Oh, I'm done. I'm done. <laughs> oh, 11 hours. You're getting a celebration icon on here. <laughs> we appreciate that. But that's our goal, right? I think everything we talked about this evening, you're, you're, um, you're hitting on. So um, if we don't have any other comments or questions this evening, we will not hold you here. <laughs> we want to make sure that we're conserving your time. Um, again, if you want to provide any um, more comments, we do have our Ramsey County um, webpage and it's simply um, www.ramseycounty.us backslash ESC. So Environmental Service Center. Thank you, Noel, for putting that in the chat. You can use that comment form. You can view our FAQ section on the website that we'll be building as we move through um, the last three of four of our open houses. Um, and of course, you can send an email um, to the askeh at ramseycounty.us with specific questions. So we appreciate your time this evening. We appreciate your input. We appreciate your enthusiasm. Um, it, it's a really exciting time and we look forward to what's to come um, in 2015. So thank you. And we appreciate you all for attending tonight. Have a great evening. Thanks, everyone. Have a good evening. Hi.